Alrighty, we are back for another painting video, and today we are going to be painting one of the new, at least at the time of filming, one of the new jet bikes for the Horus Heresy, Warhammer 30k for short. Uh, and as you can see, this is a world leader. We've got him, got him on, on there. He's got a, a weapon uh, that I've added, a shoulder pad I've added, and then a helmet, obviously. But otherwise, this is the stock kit. Um, I just added those three bits. Um, and we're actually going to start by popping him off the stand here. And we're going to start with not painting, but we're going to get an X-Acto knife. And we're going to come along here, right on this front bit. Um, I want to paint, I use contrast for both the white and the blue on my world leaders. And so I just want to score a line right down here because I want this part of this, whatever the front bit here is, uh, the nose here. I want this part to be blue and the rest to be white. And so I'm just going to take this knife and score a line as carefully as I can. Just down like this. Just about there should be good. And I can always clean it up with the paint as I need to. But that, even that subtle little line will help the paint. The, when the contrast gets to it, it won't run over. As long as, you know, you're not gobbing it on and stuff. So then I'm just going to try to replicate that on the other side. So we come down to roughly the middle there. So I'm just going to try to do that again. As carefully as possible. And this is a curved surface. There we go. That one worked out even better. This is a curved surface, so your blade will try to wander just a little bit. But I think I'm just going to score this line one more time. I don't think it was quite deep enough the first time. There we go. Wonderful. So now with that scored we will get ready to paint. So I will get my paints together, and then we'll come back and get started. All right, we're back. And the first paint we're going to use is Apothecary White, the contrast paint. I uh, went back and forth between Apothecary White and Soul Blight Gray. Uh, this is technically a shade, not a contrast, as you can see by the name. But it kind of works the same way, and I may use this to darken some of the recesses. We'll see how it goes. But we're going to start off with Apothecary White. Um, if you want to see the, the actual difference here, this is Apothecary White. This is uh, Soul Blade Gray. Uh, they obviously won't be this dark on a model because they're going to spread out, but uh, that's sort of what we're working with. So I'm just going to start over here. Oh, I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I forgot to do that. And now we're just going to start over here, and this can cross over the uh, the line we made here. This line is just to prevent the blue from crossing over into the white section. So I'm just going to do this all over the armor. Make sure to get the undersides also. Um, all this down here is going to be silver, uh, or maybe black, so we don't have to worry about that. But all this stuff back here will be white. I'm just making sure to smooth it out so we don't have any pooling of any kind. Just work it in here. This is also going to be, uh, that's going to be silver. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, we actually, I should have, I kept this guy off his stand for the cutting of the line there, but... I should really attach him back for this part so I don't have to worry about holding on. Um, and as you can see, they will, they'll sit right on here on their uh, stands, no problem. As long as you don't smash the brush into them too hard, they should sit on there happily and, uh, and not have to be glued. Which is nice because that means for transport, you could also take them off their stands. So for these big smooth parts, I'm just making sure to use long strokes. We don't if we go super choppy, we're gonna get a uh, pooling and tide marks and all sorts of terrible things that we don't want in here. And get all of this. And 
And then we just have to get the Marine. And we are good to go. Oh, there's a piece of fuzz right there. Well, I'll get this off eventually. Oh! Well, I conquered the fuzz, but I dropped him and his arm fell off. That's okay. I'll glue him back on when, uh, I'll glue that arm back on while we're waiting for this paint to dry. But for now, I'll just continue on and get the Marine all painted here. Uh, I won't worry about the shoulder pads because they're going to be blue. But I will do everything else. There may end up being some blue on his helmet somewhere. Um, or possibly some red, but I'm not sure where yet, so I'm just going to do it all in the apothecary white for now. You know, I said that he'd stay on there quite happily. <laughs> Maybe I was wrong. Maybe you will have to glue him. We'll see. We shall see. Let me get in this little crevice right here. There we go. Alrighty, I think. Oh, I gotta get this wing here. Then after that, I will reattach the arm. Uh, paint the arm in the white that we need it to be. Then I will let that all dry. And then we'll come back and do the blue, I think. Alright, we are back. And we're gonna go on to the black now. I'm gonna use Black Templar for this. And uh, there's a high likelihood that this guy will fall off his base again. But uh, we're just going to roll with it. Get my brush a little wet again. And we're going to paint all this stuff down here. Um, we're going to come back and do some metallic highlights and things like that down here. But to start off, we're just going to get it all blacked out. Make it easier to... Uh, figure out which details are going to be what later. Especially when something is painted all white like this. Um, oh, and this was primed in uh, gray sear, by the way. Um, but no, it wasn't. That's a lie. It was primed in Corax white. That's right. Um, when something is all white like this, it can be hard to, at least for me, it can be hard to sort of figure out what I need to do next because everything that's unpainted is just bright white and so kind of nothing looks good when everything else is just bright white um and so i'd like to black in as many details as i can early on so that we're eliminating large chunks of the just blank white space um for some people that may not matter to them but uh, for me i find it really helps the paint process and stuff that's just going to be you know end up being black or painted metallic doesn't matter we're not gonna I'm gonna use another contrast paint on it that we can't use over this black, so we are good to go. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get as much of this as I can with this brush. I may need to switch to a smaller brush to get uh like the details up in here and stuff. But I'm gonna do as much as I can. and get this jet engine or turbine whatever it is back here and then I'm also going to get this try to be more in camera here get this part Just making sure to not get paint on the white as much as I can. There we go. This is all going to be metallic, so I'm not going to bother painting it. This down here is going to have some parts that are black and some parts metallic. That's why I'm base coating it in black here. But this whole middle section is going to be silver, so I don't need to worry about base coating it because the silver will do that. So then I'm just going to get in here. 
and then I'm going to get in here. Oh, actually, I'm going to do, I'm going to pop this. Oh, I'm going to pop the whole guy off. Oh, I knew it was going to happen. I may end up just gluing him because he is proving more difficult than I anticipated. Um, but all the guns here, I say this and then it doesn't come out. Um, all the guns can be uh, attached without any glue or magnets or anything. They just pop in and out. Uh, so I'll do that. And then I'm just going to get all this area around here. And then I'm also going to base coat that plasma gun in black. Um, except for the plasma coil itself, obviously. So yeah, uh, I'm going to do everything I painted on this side, on the other side as well. Then I'm going to get in here and do all the consoles. I probably need a smaller brush for that. I'm going to do the gun. Then I'm going to glue him to the stand so he stops falling off. And then we'll come back and then we'll do the blue. All right, we are back and we're going to do the blue now. And for that, we're going to do Asserman blue. And uh, we're going to do two coats of this. So I'm just going to do one on camera here. But then I'll wait for it to dry and then do another. So I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. And we're going to start up here in the, uh, the place we scored earlier. Just going to come along here just like that. There we go. And as you can see, I mean, I am being careful, obviously, but I was able to mostly just follow that line and uh, not have any trouble. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to start from the bottom here. And as you can see, the paint is not traveling over into that white section. All right, that's, you know, it's a little bumpy, but it's not too shabby. We're going to let that dry, and then we'll come back and do another one. But in the meantime, I'm going to get the rest of this stuff that needs to be blue, which will be his shoulder pads here. Being careful not to get it on his armor. Or on the rest of his armor, I should say. Now, the trim is fine, because that's going to be copper or silver, but... On his arms and stuff. I don't want to get it there. Just going to do it on the underside of his shoulder pad here. And then on this side as well. There we go. And then on this bumpy shoulder pad. There we go. And then we just get a couple other details that we're going to do in blue. All right. I think that's... Oh, I'm going to get this part right there. There we go. Oh, and I missed a little spot right there along the edge. Okay. Just double checking up here now. Making sure I got it all. All right. So then we're going to come in here and get these little sections of the wings here. I'm going to do the bottom of this also, but just to speed the video up a little bit, I won't do that on camera. There we go. And then I'm going to come back here. And this whole inset area here, I'm going to do in blue. And while I'm doing this, I'm sure that I will get some blue on the inside edge here. Um, if I do, I will just come back with just any old white, uh, Corax white or white scar or anything like that, and just touch it up. And that shouldn't be a problem. Flip it over here. To keep the model in focus, that would be a good idea, typically. Alrighty, so aside from the bottom of the wings that I still will do, I 
think that will be it for the blue. Um, like I said, I'm going to do one more layer on top of this. Once this dries. But uh, I'll do that off camera. And then when I come back, we will do the silver. Alright, we are back. And we're going to do the silver. And for this, we're going to use a paint that I have never used before. Other than one time very briefly last night. Just to test it out. Um, that's Dark Silver from Pro Acryl. Um, I picked up a couple of these just to see how the metallics work. And uh, this, the one tiny little bit I painted with this last night, it seemed pretty good. So I figure we will use it again. Uh, the only problem with these paints that I've found is that the twist cap here, when you twist it closed, you end up with some paint on the tip that you have to wipe off. Kind of annoying, but not a deal breaker. As long as the paint's good, and so far it has been. So with this, I'm going to paint these pipes here. And I'm also going to get the main part of the turbine. And then finally this, uh, whatever this bit is, here in the middle. I'm not, uh, I'm not very up on the anatomy of a jet bike, so I'm not sure what all these things are called. So I'm going to stop right there, leave the rest black, but then from here back will be silver. Get the other side here. And, and some of this, I'm not getting full coverage, and that's okay. As long as it gets the metallic sheen on it, and that'll be good enough for me. The black underneath will, uh, will blend well enough into this metal that I don't really need to worry about perfect coverage. And get these. Sorry, I've changed around my, uh, my setup here, and so I'm... And it's been a while since I've filmed some videos, so just getting used to keeping the miniature in frame still. Let me get these inner bits here of these two things. Um, one part of the new setup, though, is this silicone mat that I have, um, which hopefully will help keep things in focus more. I know sometimes when I've been painting stuff in the past, for whatever reason, the camera focuses on the details of the cutting mat that's here. But uh, hopefully with this uniform gray surface, that won't be a problem anymore. So once I learn what I'm doing again and figure out where exactly I have the camera pointed, should be uh, should be an overall benefit. So now I'm going to get these things here. Um, and I was curious um, how the... Pro Acryl paint that I've never used before, how the coverage would be, and uh, this is basically the first test of it, and over this bright, stark white, it seems to be pretty good, so that's a good sign for the future. I've heard, uh, heard pretty much only good things about the Pro Acryl range. I don't think I'll ever own the whole thing, but uh, just the metallics and maybe a few select colors I could see myself using. Pretty much how paint ranges go for me is I buy, uh, I have I have GW and I have every one of GW's paints and that's what I use mostly. Um, and then I will just buy a couple colors that either don't exist in GW or that maybe aren't the greatest um, in GW. So for instance, I have a Scale 75 color that is Warpstone Glow equivalent. This Warpstone Glow just has terrible coverage. And I'll be honest, the Scale 75 one doesn't have amazing coverage, but it is still better than Warpstone Glow. And then, other than that, I pretty much will just buy Metallics because I just think that Metallics are cool paint and I can always use variations of different Metallic colors just for you know, paint and terrain or whatever, just to mix it up. 
Um, the one exception to that, recently anyway, is the D&D paint line from uh, the partnership with WizKids and Vallejo. Um, mostly because they were so cheap. They were like $2.50 a bottle. So I could get the the whole range for like 100 bucks or something. Um, and so I did that. But otherwise, we just get a couple select colors. But, uh, you know, if a major competitor to contrast paint ever comes out that somehow is better than contrast paint, I probably would pick that line up. The only two big competitors I know of right now are, or at least attempting to be competitors, are Army Painter, uh, I forgot what they're called, <laughs> the Army Painter Contrast line, and the Scale 75 Instant Colors, and uh, both of them fall f short for me, so I'm willing to, willing to spend the extra money on the Citadel Contrast still. They perform far better than both of those. So I'm just getting this last little bit in here. Right along this edge. There we go. Oh, and then this little bit right here. And then I think we are good on the silver. There will be some silver probably on the marine, but I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with him yet. And honestly... I may not even paint him in the video just because I've added some bits to him. And so my experience of painting this guy will probably differ from yours. Um, but the jet bike will largely be the same. Um, so I will. I'll do the jet bike and then paint him. And in the final pictures, you'll see him fully painted. But yeah, that is, that is this silver done. Except I think I'm going to do these in silver. So we'll grill here in the front. And I'm also going to put some of the silver on the plasma cannon. So let me grab that real quick. And I think I'll do this part down here. And this bit here. We'll just keep it simple. I think that that will be it. So yeah, um, I'll obviously do, do the other side of that plasma gun, and I'll touch up any details I need to on the dude, uh, and then I'll let this dry, we'll come back and do the gold. Alright, we are back, and we're going to paint the trim now. And for that, we're going to use another pro curl color I picked up, and this is just called Bronze. And uh, this is going to be for all the gold detail and trim and stuff. We are going to highlight on top of this, but first we're just going to lay down a nice base coat with this bronze and then we'll come back and highlight it later but this is just going to be all of the trim on the bike itself along the fuselage pieces here and then also the eye of Horus here and then trim back here maybe some bits down here and then probably some on the marine also but uh like I said, I'll be painting him off camera, so. But I'm just going to be very careful here, coming down the sides of this trim, keeping the paint off the main part of the blue, and then doing the same thing here. Just being very careful. This is kind of fiddly work doing the trim like this, um, but... It really helps to paint the sides here. If, you, if you've painted the front and then look down and see the sides still white, it kind of kind of ruins it a little bit, in my opinion. Um, so then I'll paint the, the eye here. Get this all nice and blocked in. And again, this, uh, this is actually the very first time I'm using this color specifically. Um, and it also has excellent coverage. So that's nice. All right, so then I'm going to do this trim here. I'm going to do this, all this trim around here. I might do those even. 
And then I'm not sure if I'll do anything in bronze down here. Maybe just these, these rings around the pipes right here. Just like that. That looks good. Um, nothing up here, I think. We'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Um, making sure to get all the edges nice and covered. And then once this is all dry, we'll come back and do the highlight on top of this color. All right, we are back. And we're going to start off by highlighting our bronze here. And for that, we are going to use the third Pro Curl color I acquired. It's called Rich Gold. Seems like it's a slightly brighter version of uh, Retributor Armor. I'm just going to come here in the middle of each of these bronze sections and just do a little bit of a highlight. Still leaving the bronze in the corners and up here and stuff. But uh, just brightening, brightening each section up a little bit. Let's come in here like this. And these will blend together pretty well, it seems, which is exactly what I was hoping for. And just brighten it up a little bit, but not take it to complete gold. I'm going to highlight the... If we can get it to focus, maybe. There you go. Just going to highlight the the upper parts of the eye of Horus here, and then do the same thing I did on the other side. There we go. Get down here. Just being careful. I'm using the side of my brush here because I don't want to get any of this gold on the on the white, especially if I got it on the silver, I could just paint over it. But on the white it would be more difficult. We could fix it, but I'd rather not have to. So then I'm just going to highlight the very center of all those sections there. Go ahead and get in the middle of this. Get some on the guy's helmet while I'm here. Go and just get. Looks fine. And then just get our last couple sections here. Oh yeah, that uh I got some gold right there, but that reminds me that I wanted to originally do those spots in bronze, and then I didn't, so I'll just paint them straight in gold after I finish these highlights. So I'm just gonna get Again, just the very middle of these bands here. And then I'll paint these gold. Making sure to get the sides here and the tops. And then the other side. Alrighty, and then I'll do a little bit of, just a little bit of highlight here, since this is already painted. May as well finish it out. And then just a little bit on there. And there we go. There is our gold, our bronze, all nice and highlighted. Now I'm just going to get the plasma gun here. And uh, I realized... I did this off camera, I didn't mean to, but I just put some frost heart right on there, and then we're going to come back and highlight those plasma coils later. But for right this second, I'm just going to paint these circles in, in this gold. And then, of course, I'll do the other side as well. But, I will let all this dry, and then we will come back and highlight the silver, probably. All right, we are back. And we're going to highlight the silver now. Uh, and for that, I'm going to use the D&D Prismatic Paint Silver. And I'm just going to do similar to what I just did with the gold. I'm just going to find 
bits of the silver that need to be highlighted, like these little things here, and, well, highlight them. So I'm going to get the edges here. Come down like this. And then it'll just be about going around picking out other things to be highlighted. So this is all black, so I won't do that, but I'll do these things back here. So we get the, or the edges of this. Right there and right there. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, this thing back here. And I think there's some silver in the front, right? Yeah, these this grill here. I'll just uh, come down and get some light highlights on that. And I think that'll be it for. Oh, actually, we're gonna I'm gonna highlight these pipes also. I'm just gonna just come down the middle here and just do a little bit like that. Just so they stick out a little bit more. There we go. And then we will take the plasma gun, plasma cannon, whatever it is. And I'm going to highlight these bands down here first. There we go. And then the end of the gun here. And then just a tiny bit here on the... I guess that's a muzzle break? I don't know what it would be on a plasma gun. Maybe it's just part of the heat. Dis I don't know. I have no idea. All right, and then the last thing we're going to do is rivets. Just being very careful, I'm just going to go in and lightly tap the rivets. And then, besides the Marine, who I will, as I said, paint off camera, that'll be basically it, um, except there is one more thing I'm going to do, which is optional. Um, I mean, everything's optional in painting, right? Um However you want to paint your miniature, you do it. But I say it's optional because some people like to have their models be battle damaged and some don't. Um, so for this, I am going to opt to do it. And I'm just going to do it in the way that most people, or I don't know about most, but many people highlight or weather their war leaders. So I'm going to use black pudding here from the Prismatic Paint range. Black pudding. It's one of my, one of my becoming one of my favorite blacks very quickly. Um, it's got a nice, I don't know, it's just got a nice tone to it when it's on the miniature. But I'm going to take some of that and then I'm going to take my some people use foam, um, which is fine. Uh, some people use little cotton swabs. I'm just going to take my kind of beat up brush here. I'm going to get some get some of this black pudding on my brush. Get most of it off, and then I'm just going to come in around the edges of things, and I'm just going to tap in like this. Like I said, specifically focusing on the edges. And I'm just going to weather weather this jet bike just a little bit. I'll do the dude later. But for now, I will do the bike itself. So just coming down.
There we go. Doesn't have to be super crazy. You just just getting some some nicks in the paint or chips or where bullets have hit it or you know whatever. Doesn't have to be anything specific necessarily. But really focusing on the edges just to show that they're they're a little bit beat down. And then I do a couple little nicks and scratches here and there on the flat parts. So maybe just a little bit more down here. And then I think I'll focus a little bit more on these two little vents here, just to show that they're, you know, they're kicking something out and with this white armor around them, they're, uh, they're getting a little dirty. And then I'll get the wings here a little bit more. And that'll about do it. So like I said, I will uh, paint up the, the dude here, and that includes this pouch down here, because it's an optional pouch. Um, not every jet bike is going to have that. But right about now, you should be seeing some photos of him all finished, with his, with his rider finished and the base done. But yeah, I think it's a pretty pretty quick and easy paint job. Uh, pretty much all the legions, you could do the same thing. Just replace the white with the main color of the legion and replace the blue with the secondary color of the legion. And uh, then paint your trim and you, basically the same thing for whatever legion you want. Uh, probably the m most common one would be the white scars and you just replace the blue with red and maybe put a little teeth pattern on there somewhere and call it a day. Or a lightning bolt pattern, rather. Teeth would be these guys, but I didn't do that this time. But regardless, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, feel free to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you for the next one.